Today, we're gonna to be talking about how childhood trauma can affect your mental health later on in life as an adult. Today, we're gonna to be using the Adverse Childhood Experiences Test, so make sure that you stay tuned as I go through it. What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. So the first thing I wanna talk about is childhood trauma, okay? So trauma is very relative and subjective. It depends on who you are, okay? So basically, I've, I've already done a video that I will link up in the info card about um, how the ACEs test was created. I did a video about uh, weight loss and depression. So go check that video out if you want some more background on where ACEs came from. But anyways, it's mental health month. So we need to start talking about how your childhood can affect your mental health later on in life. So when talking about trauma, it doesn't necessarily have to be physical or sexual abuse, or it doesn't have to be something like insanely big. Like it can be, but it depends on the person. So what they do with this test, when you end up working with a therapist and you go through this ACEs test, they're gonna basically ask you after you take this test, how do you think these things affected you in life, okay? So this test was actually conducted on like over 17,000 people and it's a correlational test. So what this means is based on your childhood experiences, they have very strong evidence that it is linked with the issues that you're dealing with as an adult. But it means there's a correlation, not a causation. So what does that mean? All right, so some of these questions in this test might say like, were either of your parents a drug addict or an alcoholic? And let's say you became a drug addict or an alcoholic. Yes, there's a good possibility that that's why, but it doesn't mean that every child of an alcoholic or an addict is going to become an alcoholic or an addict, all right? If you're experiencing depression, anxiety, symptoms like that as an adult, and you have a very high ACEs score, it means that there's a strong possibility about how you uh, coped with these things as a child has affected your mental health later on in life. But it doesn't mean that every child who went through this as a child is automatically going to have depression, anxiety, or other symptoms of mental illness as an adult. I hope that makes sense, all right? so. I've been very interested in this and um, make sure you stay until the end of this video because I'm gonna provide some resources uh, and some other information. So make sure that you stay until the end. And also, please share this video because a lot of people may not understand why they uh, have poor mental health as an adult and this might be the reason why. So I've actually never taken the ACEs test. I heard about it a while back when I read the book Lost Connections and recently it's come up again, all right? So I decided to take this test. So apparently the, the higher your score is, the higher the chance is that you're gonna have issues later on in life. I ended up having a lot of issues, anxiety, depression, addiction, all sorts of stuff, right? Fear of abandonment. Like, it's insane. So let's see what my ACEs score is and let's see maybe how that affected me as an adult, all right? So let's get started. All right, so the test that I'll be taking, it's on the NPR website and I'll link it down in the description below. Usually um, it's like a printed out form that you fill out and check it off. But for the purpose of this video, I was like, oh, well they made it pretty easy in a website. So I'll just take it here, all right? So let's see how this thing goes. All right, start the quiz. All right, so before your 18th birthday, did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often swear at you, insult you, put you down, or humiliate you, or act in a way that made you afraid that you might be physically hurt? Um, so I'm going to answer yes on that. So um, those of you who are new here, uh, I'm the child of an alcoholic mom. Um, so there was a lot of that going on, um, yelling, saying things to me that, uh, yeah, emotional stuff. Question two, before your 18th birthday, did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often push, grab, slap, or throw something at you, or ever hit you so hard that you had marks or were injured? Um, I'm gonna say no. So part of this test, they're looking for physical or sexual abuse, physical, or emotional neglect. Um, like I had a stepdad who spanked me every now and then, but like it, it's not something I would call any kind of like abuse, like spankings, I don't know. I don't consider that. I, was, I did some bad stuff as a kid, whatevs. 
All right, question number three. Before your 18th birthday, did an adult or person at least five years older than you ever touch or fondle you or have you touch their body in a sexual way or attempt or actually have oral, anal, or vaginal intercourse with you? Uh, no, I'm very fortunate for that. Uh, real quick, uh, so in this test, it says before your 18th birthday, a lot. The reason being, the reason being, our brains don't fully pro uh, develop until we're in our mid 20s, okay? The prefrontal cortex, I've talked to you guys about this before. So we haven't necessarily developed these coping skills at a young age. That's why it can actually rewire the way that your brain works. So you can have a lot of trauma responses and anxiety and depression based on triggers later on in life. So what they, what they talk about is the reason why they use 18 is because before the age of 18, you really can't like physically leave that environment because you're not technically an adult. So if you're wondering why it says before your 18th birthday, that's why. All right, on to question four. Before your 18th birthday, did you often or very often feel that no one in your family loved you or thought you were important or special or your family didn't look out for each other, feel close to each other or support each other? Dang, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big yes. Um, wow. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, as a kid, that was one of my, my biggest issues. I, I just, I, I felt that nobody in my family really loved me. That's why, um, you know, my grandma's passing a couple years ago really hit me hard. Like, growing up, I always felt like she was the only one who truly cared about me. Um, my dad, my dad definitely did. Uh, you know, he helped raise me. He did the best that he could. Um, but I always kind of felt like an outsider in my own family. So that is a yes. All right, question five. Before your 18th birthday, did you often or very often feel that you didn't have enough to eat, had to wear dirty clothes, and had no one to protect you? Or your parents were too drunk or high to take care of you or take you to the doctor if you needed it? Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna answer yes to this. Um yeah, drunk and high, like that, that's something like what we, what we talk about, especially like in, in a therapy session is like, you know, I, I had a lot of fear and that's where a lot of my anxiety um, really stemmed from is that I didn't feel like if something, if, if some stuff were to go down, I didn't know if I could rely on someone like my mom to be there for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, my dad, while he was, you know, raised me, he was gone a lot for work or, you know, being a single dad, trying to find me a new mom and stuff like that. Um, we did have some money issues and things like that too. So that is a yes. All right, question number six. Before your 18th birthday, was a biological parent ever lost to you through divorce, abandonment, or other reason? So that's a yes. My parents divorced when I was four, and I won't go too into the story right now, but, um, a lot of my fear of abandonment came from that divorce. Uh, I, I was a mama's boy up until I was four years old, and then I ended up living with my dad. And for, till I was like 17 or 18, maybe even longer, like I thought that my mom just didn't want me. That, that's the narrative I had in my head. I thought that she just sent me to my dad's to visit and never wanted me back. Question seven, before your 18th birthday, was your mother or stepmother often or very often pushed, grabbed, slapped, or had something thrown at her, or sometimes, often or very often, kicked, bitten, hit with a fist, or hit with something hard, or ever repeatedly hit over, uh, over at least a few minutes or threatened with a gun or knife. No, that is a no. My stepdad was a jerk, but um, as far as I know, none of those things happened. Um, so question eight. Before your 18th birthday, did you live with anyone who was a problem drinker or alcoholic or used street drugs? Like, why did, why do so many of these have something to do with like, man, like addiction? Yeah, yeah, I've already said that. I've already answered that for you. Question number nine. Before your 18th birthday, was a household member depressed or mentally ill or did a household member attempt suicide? So yeah. Not only was my mom an alcoholic, but as a child, six, seven, eight years old, nine, 10, like as a kid, um, I remember my mom being drunk and locking herself in the bathroom, threatening to kill herself and things like that. Um, my mom is also somebody with uh, dual diagnosis. Um, 
she she's the one who's helped me out a lot with my mental health because pretty much every uh issue that she's had i had too that's a whole nother video about how mental illness gets passed on through genetics and things like that and if i didn't mention it and those of you who don't know my mom is actually 12 years sober now and i actually just got off the phone with her we have an amazing relationship today i just wanted to throw that in there um but she she didn't get sober until i was 20 years old before your 18th birthday did a did a household member go to prison nope well no, no, no household member go to prison. Your ACE score is a six. All right, all right. So, so yeah, um, yeah, had some stuff happen to me as a kid. Uh, and, and it's really interesting. It's, it's something that I learned a lot, you know. Um, my, my therapeutic process came a lot through uh, um, recovery programs and things like that, but I was able to go through and heal through a lot of this stuff. Um, a lot of this stuff was buried down underneath and because I refused to address it for so long, I was acting out in different ways. You know, I turned to drugs and alcohol to cope. I had a lot of anger issues. I had a lot of anxiety issues. I had a lot of fear of abandonment. Um, like I said, these are correlational stuff. Like one of the reasons I've done videos on borderline personality disorder lately is because it's absolutely intrigued me that a lot of people with BPD have a very high ACEs score. And a high ACEs score is like, you know, over like two or three can be high, you know what I mean? If you think about what the normal household is like, two or three on this test, like you just went through these questions with me, two or three is a lot, you know? Um, you know, this not only BPD, but PTSD, and again, we're talking about anxiety, depression, things like that. So these things sit underneath the surface and until we address them, they're gonna stay there. But the good news is, the good news is, is that there is a way to heal from these things. And the best way to do that is through therapy, through therapy. Because therapists, when they walk you through this, when they take you through the test, then it's time to sit down and look at these experiences and say, how have they affected you in your life? How have, have these things affected the way that you deal and manage with life? Whether that's in relationships, um, intimate relationships, relationships with friends, family members, work, right? They can start to address these things. And then the beautiful part about therapy is that they have a slew of evidence-based treatment methods that can help you start to heal through this process, right? And you work with a therapist and they'll help you figure out which ones are best for you. So there's like cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy, all these different things that are proven by science to help rewire your brain to overcome this type of childhood trauma, all right? So I was actually referred um, this podcast that I will also link in the description. And I found out about this podcast because my girlfriend has actually signed up through BetterHelp. And her therapist told her about this podcast where they do a more in-depth kind of talk about the adverse childhood experiences test. And it was amazing. Like when my girlfriend sent me that, I was like, I was like, I like your therapist. I like your therapist. And this is a BetterHelp therapist. So for those of you who didn't know, BetterHelp supports this channel and all of my beautiful viewers out there. So if you feel um, that you have things from your childhood that haven't been properly uh, dealt with yet, please, please, please check out the description below and try some online therapy. Work with a therapist. It's time for you to start healing and regain control of your mental health as well as your emotions by working through this stuff, okay? BetterHelp is extremely, extremely affordable. My girlfriend is only paying like 25 bucks a week. You know, that is really not that bad, especially when you consider that other therapists, you know, might be charging you hundreds of dollars per session, all right? So BetterHelp gives you a wide variety of therapists. They have a little questionnaire to see what kind of stuff you need to work on and all sorts of stuff. I don't know why I'm talking. Click the link, do the questionnaire and see what's going on. But anyways, like I said, if you think that you know somebody who is struggling because of adverse childhood experiences, please, 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 it's Mental Health Awareness Month, please do me a favor and share this video with them, all right? But anyways, um, you know, I enjoyed doing this video. If you'd like me to do more of them, leave a comment down below. Like, it was kind of fun taking a, a test and like, I've never done this before. So I learned a little bit more about myself as well as the ACEs test, all right? But please share it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, if you st just stumbled across this video, make sure you click that little round subscribe button. I'm always doing videos to help you out with your mental and emotional needs, all right? And if you wanna check out some other videos on this channel, 
channel, you can click or tap on one of those thumbnails, okay? So thanks again so, so much for watching. Go out, start healing, and I'll see you next time.